Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects plugin quick tip tutorial. In this one I'm going to be showing you how to iterate over all the pixels in your image whether you're using an 8-bit, 16-bit or 32 bits per channel uh, layer. We're going to be going over the iterate suite function and how to input values into that and use that to iterate over every single pixel that is given within our image. So in our case we're just using the skeleton um, gain functions but we're going to be using the iterate suite to be making sure we apply these same changes to every single pixel in the image. Before we get started, just want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And, and down in the description, you can check out more plugins, scripts, and extensions code in the GitHub link. And down there as well, you can follow us on Instagram. And of course, be sure to join the Discord server where we have good discussions on scripting, extensions, plugins, and expressions, and get a lot of help and help others in the community. So the place we're going to be using the iterate suites is inside of our main C++ file inside of the render function, whichever one you're using. And if you're using the skeleton code, you may see an iterate function already like iterate8 or iterate16. Essentially, these use one of the built-in libraries, and to see which one it is, we can just right-click on suites, and peek the definition. And the definition is right here. We're defining a new AEGP suite handler so we can peek the definition of that type. And this is then gonna take us to the AEGP suite handler header file. This is where the code to do this iterate function and many other useful things is located. So that's just a quick way to check out what files are doing what and you can go in and even look at more methods to see what else is available in that header file. But as you may notice, the way we apply and iterate over pixels for 8 bits, 16 bits, and 32 bits is going to vary. So we're going to be going over each one of the different types. But first, of course, you're going to need to differentiate if you're dealing with an 8 bit or higher bit rate uh, layer. The way we're going to do that is by calling PF world is deep. And if we peek the definition of this, it's inside of our AE underscore effect header file. And what this does is it just tells us whether it's a deep world. A deep world is anything greater than 8 bits per channel. So 8 bits per channel is sort of in its own category. And then 16 and 32 bits per channel are considered a deep world. And the deep really just means they have deeper pixel depth, I believe, because they can store more information within each pixel. And then we're giving output as the argument for PF world is deep to see if our output is deep. So basically, if it returns true, that means the world is deep and we're dealing with either 32 bits per channel or 16 bits per channel. Else, we know that it's a low bit rate and the only other uh, bit rate that there is is 8 bits per channel. There isn't like a 64 bits per channel currently uh, in After Effects at least. So basically we have the case for the 32 and 16, else it's 8 bits. So let's go ahead and start with our 8 bit. We're gonna say error in parentheses and we need to have an error check for everything we run like this because it's very important to have proper me memory management and error messages because if we have a certain error type that returns a false value, it's gonna crash our plugin and have memory problems. So we always need to enclose it in an error because at the end of this function, we're returning our error, whether or not there was any memory leaks or weird things happening. And then inside, we're gonna type in suites to access all of the suites that we have. We'll say dots to get the whole list of suites. And if you wanted, you could yourself just go in here and check out everything for yourself for all the built-in suites. But what we wanna do is grab the iterate suite so if we start typing iterate, you can see we get iterate 16, iterate 8, and iterate float. In our case, we want 8 bits per channel, so I'll select iterate 8 suite 1. Then we need to give it parentheses because we're creating a new iterate suite object essentially. So we need to construct it. And then we want to point essentially to one of its built-in things called iterate. You can see there's an iterate LUT and a couple of others. You can actually integrate a LUT and iterate that over the pixels specifically, which is pretty cool. But in our case, we just want to use a standard iterate. And then we can begin typing this as the function. We can start with an open parentheses and you can see it's gonna provide us with all of the data we need to give it in order to iterate over all of these pixels. The first piece of data we need is a PF in data data type, which is called in data. Well, this is already brought in to our render, so we just can call um, in data. The next one we're going to need is the progress base. The progress base is where your iterate is going to start on the Y axis. So if you start at zero, you're gonna be starting at the very top of the image and working your way down. 
if you started say halfway this would allow you to just do half of the image and maybe just have an interesting effect or preview half of what your plugin is doing so we're just going to say zero because we're starting at the top next we're going to need the progress final this is the final line that we're going to want to reach when we're doing our iterations so you can have control of where you're starting and where you're ending and I actually already have a variable up here keeping track of where it needs to end. And all I did was take the outputs extent hint bottom, which essentially means the bottom of our canvas. So if this is a 1920 by 1080 canvas, the very bottom is gonna be 1080. And then we're gonna subtract the top extent uh, hint. And what that means is the very top, which in our case is just zero. So 1080 minus zero is 1080. So we're gonna go from zero to 1080, which is also called our lines L. Then the next one, we're going to need a PF effect world that is our source. The source is gonna be the source material that we're going to be iterating over. Usually this will just be your layer that you have this applied to, but you can also use other variables that have a PF effect world as well. In our case, we're just gonna reference the actual layer itself, which the way we do that is grab our pointer to our parameters, and we can just grab the zero width parameter if we want and say point to the u dot layer def. Then the next thing we need is a constant rectangle for the area. I'm gonna put null for this because I don't have a specific area that I want to iterate over. I want everything. So if you want to iterate over everything, simply put null. Then the next thing we need is our refcon data. This is basically our data pointer object that we've created, and this contains all of our custom structures that are in our H file. So we have our custom struct called gain info here with our information. And we've already populated this data structure here. We basically defined GIP or our gain info pointer, and we cleared it to make sure that everything inside was clean. Uh, and then what we did was we set the green value to whatever the slider is equal to. And then all we have to do is basically get a pointer to our uh, object here, GIP. And now that we have our pointer, we just need to cast it to a pointer void, which is how it always does it inside of plugins. Basically, you just need your object and cast it to this void here. The next thing we need to give it is the function we're going to run. So in our case, we have our my simple grain function. And of course, we're iterating on an eight bits per channel. So we're gonna grab the number eight. And then the last thing we need is the destination world or the output. So after we've iterated over all the pixels or whatever our configuration is, uh, and we now need to output it to something, which can be its own new world, or in our case, we can just put out to the output. And the only thing left to add is a parentheses here to the end to close it all out. And now we should have our iterate function working. Let's go ahead and close After Effects. Make sure we have everything linked up and hit F5 to launch it. And now we can just simply load up a composition and a layer to apply it to. And we're just gonna apply it and make sure that in eight bits per channel that it's working. So I'll select iterate QT. And if I change the value, you can see we're now properly changing it, at least iterating over the pixels. And if you want, you can go in and mess around with like things of where you're starting. Maybe we could set this to 720 and you can mess around with all of the configurations and parameters to get different looks and achieve different effects. And then all that's really left to do, the nice thing that makes this super easy to add to other bit rates is all we need to do is copy and paste this inside of our world is deep and we can change iterate uh, eight to say 16. And then we'll need to update uh, my simple gain function. You can see it throws us an error because it's saying one of our arguments is off. You can see there's PF pixel 16s, but we're giving it pixel eight information with uh, my gain function eight. So we'll change that to 16 and fix that data. And to make it 32 bits per channel, just copy and paste that and change 16 to float. And then we can change this to 32 and fix that error. You may be wondering how it's gonna tell the difference between these two, and the truth is you might just wanna pick one. I usually stick with the 32 bits because it's a little bit more accurate in terms of precision, and basically these are both floating point pixels, whether it's 16 or 32 bits. They both contain enough information to get as accurate of a reproduction you want. So what I do is I almost always filter both down through a 32-bit function. So really we can just get rid of all this code and keep it between 
um, an 8-bit and a 32-bit function, but it's still going to handle all of our cases, uh, whether you have a 16, 32, or 8 bits per channel uh, layer. But that's going to do it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And of course, down in the description, check out the link to GitHub to check out more code like this and follow us on Instagram down there as well. And of course, make sure you join the Discord server to get help with scripting, plugins, extensions, expressions, and much more. Help others out in the community and get help. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time.